don't waste time on deep learning models. This may sound a little bit controversial, but in this video I'm gonna convince you, or try to, that there's more to this statement than just the clickbaity title that it sounds like. Let's start things off from my personal experience when I consult companies which are building AI and machine learning solutions. The thing usually goes like this. So they would start with something reasonable, like say for example, in music genre classification using a residual network, but then there's something more edgy to implement, right? Something more fashionable that perhaps is gonna push up the prediction accuracy. And so perhaps they will just take more time and implement a transform model. But then one of the team members has heard that there's this incredible latest super edgy uh, model that has been published and that performs fantastically well in music genre classification and so they would take even more time and implement say a transform VAE right so this is the process that you shouldn't use this is the process that Tim Dahl uses, and Tim Dahl is our old team uh, that does things the wrong way so what does Tim Dahl do in this situation well they do spend ages implementing the latest deep learning architectures, right? So the philosophy that they have is that the more complex the architecture, the best outcome. Well, this could be true, but there are many things to consider. It's not just about having the most edgy or the edgiest uh, architecture ever. It's more about a certain trade-off between many things. So how simple it is to build a certain uh, network, how simple it is to maintain it, how computationally efficient that is. And so you have a lot of things that come into place. But Tim Dell's philosophy is quite simple. So the more complex the architecture, the better for us, the best the outcome. And one of the issues that Tim Dell has all the time is data. Data for them is just an afterthought. It's something that's given and they don't manipulate it in any way, shape or form because it's a given. What's the problem with complex deep learning architectures? Well, it takes a lot of time to implement them, a lot of skills to debug and maintain them. And usually the more complex the deep learning architecture and the more computational and memory load that they usually have. It turns out that spending time on data gives you way higher returns than spending time on model. In other words, data is more important than models if you want to improve the quality or the accuracy of your models. Okay, this is not just me saying that, but the ultimate AI guru, Andrew Ang, is basically saying this, and it's been saying this like for the last few years. So we should move from a model-centric machine learning, where the model is the ultimate goal, towards data-centric machine learning, where we focus on the quality of data. And this problem is not just found in the industry, but also in research. So just go to archive and see that the overwhelming majority of papers in artificial intelligence will be focused or are focused on models. The latest model that improves by 0.001% accuracy. But there isn't that much about the improvement of data, data treatment, data quality, augmentation, and all of these things. Right, so let me try to give you a better idea of what we mean by machine learning focused on data rather than on model only. So if we think about machine learning and the different aspects that we have, we can have a triangle like this on a very, very abstract level. So you have code and you need code to uh, build a certain model that then gets trained with data. Now it turns out that most of the time what uh, AI teams do, and this is definitely what Tim Dahl does, is that they have code and model as variable, so you, they can change code and they can retrain models, but they keep data fixed. The idea of going for a 
data-centric machine learning approach instead of having data a variable in and of itself. So we can manipulate data and improve it in order to get better systems. Okay, so this is the approach that the sort of nemesis of Tim Dell does. That's Tim Smart. So they do use deep learning architectures that they know they work in the industry. So they are not super focused on the latest architecture, but rather on what works in the industry. In the case of music genre classification that we mentioned earlier, ResNet are extremely capable architectures for that use case. Cool. Then what they usually uh, take into consideration is a complexity efficiency trade-off and they find the right trade-off. And if in this case, when I talk about efficiency, I'm not just talking about like, I mean, performance, computational performance and all of that, but also all the other metrics, like uh, for example, accuracy. And the final thing that Tim Smart does very well is to improve data quality. That's basically that idea of putting data at the center of the machine learning process. But you may be wondering, what does it mean to have data quality? So let's define that. First of all, you have a quality data set when you do have consistent uh, labeling, right? So if the annotation is done in a consistent way. In the case of music genre classification, this would mean that you have certain rules that all the music analysts respect when they annotate different genre uh, for different uh, audio samples or music samples, right? So for example, say if you hear a guitar riff, most likely that is a rock or hard rock track. So things like this. And so all the different people uh, who annotate the, the music in this case are going to use a consistent way of annotation. Okay, then the next step is that of ensuring that you have a process in place to correct errors. You want data that is the most error-free as possible, right? And finally, what you want to ensure is that the distribution of trained data is similar to the distribution of server data. What this means is that you want to cover in your trained data the same situation that you have in your real-world data. Data quality is always important, but there are certain use cases where data quality is extremely important. And that is when we have data sets, which quite small data sets, actually, when we have less than 10K data samples, right? And you may be thinking, well, but we are in the big data era, so we have millions or billions of data points. Well, that's true, but that's true mainly for big consumer-facing companies. But for most use, ca use cases, which involve also experts' annotations, usually you don't have the luxury to work with millions of data points. You actually have a limited number of data points or samples in your data set. And in this case, it's extremely important to have maximum quality of your data. I hope by now you understand what I mean when I say don't waste time on your deep learning models. But let me leave you with a couple of takeaway points. First of all, you should embrace data-centric machine learning because you're going to see a lot of improvement in the quality of the solutions that you'll be building. And then just keep in mind that in most use cases, data has a way bigger impact than models in terms of accuracy and overall quality of your system. Okay, so that was it for the video. If you need any help with your AI and machine learning uh, implementations or any type of consulting, you can uh, get in touch with me. If you want to learn more about my services, you can visit my website. And if you want to contact me, you can drop me a message on LinkedIn or just send me an email. That's all for today. I'll see you next time. Cheers for now.